everyone, welcome to another video. So today what we're going to be doing is having a look at the settings in the IT crowd. Before we get started, if those of you who haven't seen my social media, my Twitter, my Instagram, or who watched the last video, basically I'm at the point now where I really want to make the channel useful. I want it to be something that you guys find uh, helpful for your GCSEs that you can turn to for revision tips or resources that you might not have access to at home or at school so I'm looking for you guys to share with me ideas that you would like to see on the channel whether that is videos whether it's ideas for resources whether it's something that you think I need to cover in a little bit more detail or if it's just a question that you have please pop it in the comment section below or get in touch with me through social media so that I can get those made for you guys so before we get started, we have one shout out today, which is to Michael. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed and you would like a shout out, please subscribe. There's more information up at the end of the video. And if you have subscribed, but you've not had a shout out, please pop me a message in the comment section below. So settings in the IT crowd then, there's not as many in the IT crowd as there were in things like the Sweeney or Luther, which I've already made videos on. Um, and there's sort of more here than there will be for friends when I eventually make that video. For some of these settings I've sort of shoved a few things together so I'll explain that as we go along. So to begin with then the street, we see this at the beginning with uh, Moss running but I've also sort of considered the street outside of the 8 plus club, the street view that we get when Roy is on the bike and the street view that we get when he's travelling down with the window cleaner. So I've sort of put those all together because they all do really the same thing which is that they're ambiguous and they're enigmatic because they represent basically any town or city in the UK and by representing anywhere it doesn't close off any member of the demographic. The demographic can imagine that that is their place of work. They might find some elements that seem close to what they experience in real life. So this adds to the idea that the characters are average people, sort of like the average person on the street which makes the show as a whole more relatable and therefore the audience can connect to it more deeply and they um, perhaps find more humour in the situations that the characters go through. The office for the IT crowd is actually the basement. Um, so this subverts reality because we wouldn't expect to find anybody working in the basement of a company. Um, potentially not the IT crowd even if that is the case. But it, in a way it also sort of conforms to the expectation that there's this stereotype existing whereby the IT support and all of the members of a company are sort of separate, sort of an us and them thing. Um, so the office sort of both conforms and subverts expectations. It's also very messy and cluttered. Now this really does conform to the stereotype that IT support are generally male, that they're generally um, nerds or geeks and that they are perhaps people who collect a lot of memorabilia that the average person would look at and think is sort of junk. Now this helps to reveal a lot about Moss and Roy, particularly as the, sh as the show progresses. So what would be a really good idea for those of you studying the IT crowd is to watch the very first episode. If you watch the very first episode, you'll be able to see what Mo Ross and Moss and Roy were like when um, before Jen arrived and then you can compare that to this episode when obviously she's been with them for four seasons now so you'll be able to see how their characters have changed, how the office has changed um, and obviously because the office is a little bit more cluttered, a little bit messier, it's got the sofa in there as well, it creates a more welcoming atmosphere for the audience because it's got this sort of lived in look which then makes the audience more likely to want to find out about it, doesn't put them off, doesn't make them feel awkward because it's very bland or very sparse which is similar to the next setting. So the countdown studio and waiting room I've sort of pushed together. Um, the countdown studio is obviously instantly recognisable, it's got very high key lighting, it's something that wouldn't need a lot of explaining for the audience. The waiting room to the countdown sort of studio when Prime turns up and gives uh, Moss the card, this sort of conforms to expectations. We wouldn't expect it to be messy, we would expect it to be quite neat, quite tidy. It sort of matches Moss's personality really well, even down to the little tub of biscuits that are on the table. 
In a way, though, it, it does seem really sparse, particularly when contrasted to that bright studio lighting, which we get just before we see uh, Moss inside that waiting room. Now, Roy's flat is the next setting that we see, and this completely subverts expectations. His flat seems modern, it seems neat and tidy, it seems quite large as well, so the bathroom seems quite big for a, an apartment or a flat or perhaps a, a house that he's living in. So this seems at odds with the way that Roy presents himself at work. He's very messy, he's very loud, he's abrasive at work and so we get to see another side of the character that perhaps we're not familiar with and this helps to make him a more well-rounded character. If there was only one side to him, if there was only one setting for Roy, then the audience wouldn't be engaged in following what happens with him all the way through what ended up being sort of five seasons. Now, the 8 Plus Club is obviously a major setting within the show as a whole. I've looked at the 8 Plus Club sort of from the beginning that we first see the club right the way through until they go into Street Countdown. So the outside of the club, before they even get into the building, subverts expectations. We would not expect a club to be in an office building, and it also raises enigma because we wonder what kind of club this is. If the club is what we assume, which is a sort of... Uh, bar type area then we wouldn't expect it to be there but if the club is just a gathering then perhaps it makes more sense. The stairwell and the idea that the club is on the top floor also subvert expectations because it would be unlikely that you would get a bar or somewhere that's particularly noisy being on the top floor of any sort of building particularly if the patrons are going to have to stagger down the stairs afterwards. Now the steric, um, another part of the setting that I've added is the sort of attractive female guard who's outside. Now, we could argue that she's a character, but I've put her together with the setting for the moment because the idea that there is a guard outside this club is unusual in itself. The fact that it is a stereotypically attractive female, again, it raises enigma because we wonder exactly what kind of club this is, this is that the characters are going to be entering and also doesn't seem to fit with the idea that this is a club for people who have been on countdown um, and sort of fit the same sort of character as Moss. Now, inside the club, obviously, we have this conforming to the idea that it's a club like a bar, a lounge, it's got music, there's dancing, there's drinking. Like, this sort of conforms to what we assumed right at the beginning. But it subverts expectations in that every person who's in there is somebody who has been on Countdown or who is a fan of Countdown and who has achieved a certain level within the countdown group and community. The fact that all of the characters who are in there are wearing what we would consider to be stereotypically nerdy or geeky clothing um, also subverts this expectation, as does this idea that the countdown groupies are the most attractive um, and I think they're described as the most sexually voracious of all groupies. So that again subverts these expectations. So the 8 plus club is quite an enigma in itself and it does a lot of things all at once. So it's really important that we sort of pick that apart. Now the underground car park, um, I've put a little question mark there because it's unclear whether it is actually a car park. I'm assuming that it is, um, but we don't get a lot of information about it. We certainly know or assume that it's underneath the building of the 8 plus club. Um, we don't obviously have no idea where the relation uh, what the relation is to the 8 plus club or where it is as I've just said um, it's also very reminiscent of films such as Fight Club and while it does conform to the idea of it being street it's very Americanized so this is the sort of thing that we would see in American crime dramas that we'd see in American shows where people are having to meet secretly it doesn't seem to fit with the idea of this being a British sitcom Finally, we have the office in terms of the meeting room that Jen goes to. Now, the meeting room um, seems very generic, as does the corridor, but they're also very ambiguous because, again, we have no idea what Renham Industry actually produces, what they're involved in, and so, in a way, this helps it to be more relatable and also adds humour in that sense. 
Now, the revelation that there's a fitness class in the meeting room is made more of a surprise to the audience because it's so generic. If there were clues outside of this or if we knew what the company made, it might not be as much of a shock to the audience when they, they actually go in and Jen realises what she's let herself in for. Hopefully that was really useful for you guys. I think I was quite quick in explaining a few things. So if you have any questions, please pop them in the comment section below. Again, as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm looking for advice, for um, ideas, for suggestions in making this channel something that you guys would use that would be helpful to you. So any video ideas, resource ideas, anything that you want to see, anything that you want help with, please pop them in the comments section below or get in touch with me through Twitter at media underscore revision or Instagram at GCSE media revision. If you haven't already, please subscribe. If you hit the button below, you'll get a shout out in the next video. And if you turn on your notifications, then you'll get an instant message every time I post a new video, which is quite regularly at the moment, given the situation that we're in. I'll see you guys later for another video.